I'm in the book of Revelation, and in Revelation 1, 19, look at the built-in outline that God put in the book of Revelation. He says, Write the things which thou hast seen, number one, and the things which are, number two, and the things which shall be hereafter. So the things which thou hast seen, there's Revelation chapter 1. The things which are, there's Revelation 2 and 3. And then the things which shall be hereafter, there's Revelation 4 through 22. And you just lay out the chapters and look at them, write down what each one of them are about. You're going to find that the book of Revelation shows you the premillennial outline, even though it's not in chronological order. Like in chapters 1 through 3, what is it talking about? The seven churches. So you could call that representing the church age that we're in right now. We're in the church age. But then what happens in chapter 4? You get over to chapter 4 and you see that John is being called up into heaven. And it's a picture of the rapture. And I know that makes a lot of people mad me saying that. But in Revelation 4 and verse 1, he says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. So you got a door opening in Revelation 4, and somebody goes up. You're going to get to Revelation 19. You're going to see another door opens in heaven, and somebody comes down. But here you got a picture of the rapture. Possibly John took forward in time, and the Lord let him see the rapture and even kind of take part of it. So he says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me. Well, remember who that is, the Lord Jesus Christ from chapter 1, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And when you sit down and start thinking about this, you start having some crazy thoughts like, So if John was took forward in time and went up in a rapture, uh, well, his actual body that's in the future when the rapture happened would also be going up as well so i wonder if he actually saw in the future his body go up as well or saw him self up there in the third heaven praising god and things like that and it says come up hither so this pictures the rapture so the first three chapters picture the church age because it's talking about churches and then after that, you got chapter 4, which pictures the rapture of the church. And then in uh, verses 10 and 11 of chapter 4, you got the 24 elders that cast their crowns at the Lord's feet. That could be a picture of the judgment seat of Christ. So there you got the rapture and the judgment seat of Christ in Revelation chapter 4. Then in chapter 5, it says in chapter 5 and verse 1, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And nobody's worthy to open the book. Nobody, no angel, no strong man, nobody in heaven, nobody anywhere is found worthy to open the book except for one. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Showing you that even... And glorified bodies were not as worthy as he is. And he gets the book. And the Lamb opens the book. The line of the tribe of Judah opens the book. And what you got is a book sealed with seven seals. And so the Lord is going to take a seal off. And John's going to see something. Then he's going to take the other seal off. John's going to see something. He's going to take off the other seal. He's going to loose the other seal. So that shows you how Revelation is, is laid out. John is writing it in the order that he sees it, not necessarily in chronological order. And the Lord's loosen the seal. John sees what that one is, and he writes it. Then you get to Revelation chapter 6, and it's going to take you through the first account of the tribulation. Now, I believe in that there is five accounts of the tribulation laid out in the book of Revelation. Just like you got the four Gospels of the Lord Jesus Christ and it talking about 
they're, all of them are talking about the earthly ministry of Jesus, but it's given you a different perspective in each gospel. Well, I believe through the book of Revelation, you got at least five accounts of the tribulation. And it's just giving it to you from a different perspective. In Revelation 6, it's giving it to you from the perspective of primarily the four horsemen. What people call as the four horsemen of the apocalypse many times. I'm sure you've heard that. But he opens the seals. He opens the first seal. What do you got? The Antichrist riding a white horse. And many people confuse that with Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ comes on a white horse. But remember that Antichrist, he's a counterfeit. He's a copycat Christ. He's not the real deal. And he doesn't show up with a sword. He's got a bow and an arrow. Or actually, he just has a bow. He doesn't have an arrow because he comes in peaceably. And then you got he, him opening the second seal. What is it? It's a red horse. That's war. You got him opening the third seal. Black horse. That's famine. You got him opening the fourth seal. And there's the pale horse, which is death and hell follows with him. And then you got the fifth seal, which is the martyrs, those souls under the altar, people that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's the fifth seal. So there's going to be lots of persecution going on, lots of killing of Christians during this time. Anybody that going through, or anybody that believes the Bible and on, on, the, on the Lord, and, you know, somebody said, well, if the saints are raptured out, then if the saints are raptured out before the tribulation, then how is the Antichrist persecuting people? How are Christians being persecuted in the tribulation if they're already gone? Well, people is going to get right with the Lord and become followers of Jesus Christ even after the rapture. You see? So there's going to be people who get right with God during the tribulation. And then you got the sixth sixth seal where the sun goes black and the moon turns into blood and at the that's the end of the first account of the tribulation in the book of revelation in it's all in chapter six and it says in revelation six twelve through 17 and you're going to notice this is the second coming of the lord jesus christ i want to show you how all these accounts of the tribulation end with the second coming of Jesus Christ, showing the Lord showing you that that's one account. Here's another account. And then he stamps it with the second coming on the end. But he says in Revelation 6, 12 through 17, And I beheld, and when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? You see, that's the second coming, and it matches Matthew 24, where it says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, in verse 29 of Matthew 24, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Notice how that matches Revelation 6. Those events happen, and then you got people hiding from the Lord, from His wrath. So there was the first account of the tribulation in the book of Revelation. You get to chapter 7, and it's like a parenthetical chapter, where John sees the 144,000. You get to Revelation 8 through 11, and this is where you're going to get into the second account of the tribulation. And this confu might confuse you here because the seventh seal is not open until Revelation 8. So you're like, if the seventh seal isn't open until Revelation 8, I thought you said the seals were the first account of the tribulation. But remember, John is writing it in the order that he saw it. And remember, this, these, this book that's sealed with seven seals, the Lord's just loosen the seals of a book and every time he loosed the seals of that book john sees something else and when he looses the seventh when the lamb looses the seventh seal the seal opening 
the seventh seal opening shows John the seven trumpets. So that's that's what the seventh seal is. Is it's showing John the seven trumpets. Now the first trumpet is going to be hell, fire, mingled with blood. In Revelation chapter eight, you got the first trumpet, hell and fire mingled with blood. The trees and grass get burned up. A third part of it. You got the second trumpet. It's something like a great mountain is cast into the sea and it becomes blood. And a, th a third part of those in the sea die and the ships are destroyed. You got the third trumpet where a star falls called Wormwood and it makes the water bitter and deadly. And you got the fourth angel where a th he makes a third part of the sun and a third part of the moon and a third part of the stars goes out. Then you got the fifth trumpet. In the fifth trumpet in Revelation chapter 9, the bottomless pit is opened. And those locusts come out and they torment men for five months. I believe in a literal interpretation of the Bible. So I believe those are literal devilish locusts that come up out of a bottomless pit. The sixth angel sounds and you got the four angels who are bound in the river Euphrates. They're loosed and a 200 million man army slay the third part of man. Then you get down to Revelation 9 and uh, 21 and it says that people still do not repent even after all this they're not repenting and revelation chapter 10 you got kind of another little parenthetical chapter there where john sees the angel of the lord and revelation chapter 11 you got the ministry of the two witnesses moses and elijah that will most likely be in the last half of the tribulation the last three and a half years they get beheaded and then you see the seventh trumpet reveals this is now God's kingdom in Revelation eleven fifteen, It says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of, our, of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So, you see, that angel's proclaiming that, that the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, showing you that Jesus Christ has come down at the second coming to take over and set up his kingdom on the earth. So the second account of the tribulation, Revelation 8 through 11, ends with Jesus Christ reigning. Then you turn the page, you get to Revelation 12 through 14, you're going to have the third account of the tribulation from the perspective of the work of the devil and the Antichrist. How are the Antichrist and the devil working in the tribulation? Well, in Revelation 12, you see how the dragon, which is the devil, the old serpent, Satan, Leviathan, he's obviously persecuting Israel. He hates Israel. He's always hated Israel. Ever since God's covenant with Abraham, he's hated them. And that's what you see. The, the woman in Revelation 12 is obviously Israel. And he's persecuting her. And in Revelation 13... The greatest chapter on the Antichrist in the Bible, most likely. You got the Antichrist and the false prophet discover, uh, discussed in this chapter. The Antichrist gets a deadly head wound, rises from the dead. The false prophet makes an image of him, and the whole world wonders after him. They deceive the whole world with uh, their power and signs and lying wonders, and the mark of the beast is implemented. You can't buy or sell, save any man have the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. And you got to worship him or you can't buy or sell. You are, and you'll be beheaded if you don't. So Revelation 12 through 13 puts you uh, through the third account of the tribulation from the perspective of the Antichrist ministry, the devil, the dragon, the false prophet. Revelation 14, you got another little commercial break like chapter going on here for the most part. And it also talks about the 144,000, how they are male, Jewish, virgins. So all these people going around claiming to be the 144,000 a day, they don't know what they're talking about because most of them probably aren't even male Jewish virgins, if any. But I want to show you further proof that Revelation isn't written like chronologically, like just one thing happening after the other in order. is because in Revelation 14.8, it talks about Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city. You're going to have, in other chapters, talking about Babylon falling. 
Babylon isn't falling that many times. So that's showing you that you've got more than one account going on here. And, but here's your second coming for the third account of the tribulation of Revelation 12 through 14 is Revelation 14, 19 through 20, where it says, And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it to the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city and blood came out of the winepress even into the horse's bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. So there is the second coming where the blood's going to be up to the horse's bridle. The Lord comes through with all the saints. And the, I mean, it's a graphic time where they stomping the enemies of God. The blood comes up to the horse's bridle and it's like stomping the wine press. Stomping on a bunch of grapes. Revelation 15 through 16, you got the fourth account of the tribulation from the perspective of the seven vials. The first vial is a grievous sore on men who take the mark. So this, most likely, these seven vials, this is showing you the last three and a half years, these vials, a grievous sore on men who take the mark. And it's like a leprous sore. Then the second vial, the sea becomes as blood. Every living soul dies in the sea. The third vial, rivers and fountains of waters become blood. The fourth vial, the sun scorches men with fire. The fifth vial, you got darkness over the Antichrist kingdom. The sixth angel, uh, sixth vial, the water of Euphrates is dried up. And that way, the way of the kings of the east can be prepared. They can gather together against Israel easier to try and wipe them out. You see, the water serves as protection. When it's dried up, they can come through much easier. And that's what the Lord wants. It's his determination to gather the nations. But here's your second coming at the end of this fourth account, Revelation 15 through 16. Revelation 16, 12 through 16 says this, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. There's your satanic trinity. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Now look at this. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. There's your battle of Armageddon the second coming of Jesus Christ, where the Lord Jesus comes down out of the clouds to fight the battle for Israel against their enemies that have gathered together against them. And then once again, you got the account of Babylon falling in Revelation 16, 17 through 19, showing you it's not in chronological order because Babylon already fell in Revelation 14. Then you got the fifth account of the tribulation from the very perspective of, of Babylon falling and Revelation 17 through 18. So if Revelation is chronological, you got Jesus Christ coming back four or five times and you've got Babylon falling like three times. So it's not chronological. You've got the fifth account of the tribulation with Babylon falling there in Revelation 17 and 18. And what is it? What does that take you to? Revelation 19. Another account of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the best one. And Revelation 19, 11 through 21, it details it so well. I'll let you go read it. But heaven opens again. Here comes the Lord Jesus Christ on a white horse. He has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he's got that sharp two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. And with it, he's going to smite the nations. And he's got us behind him on white horses as well. And the beast and the false prophet are taken and cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. And all the fowls are filled with their flesh, the people's flesh. And then, after chapter 19, it doesn't give you another account of the tribulation. Revelation 20 takes you to the millennial reign 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you'll notice that it says 1,000 years, like six times, to show you this. I'm really talking about a 6,000 year period where Jesus Christ is going to reign. The devil's going to be chained in the bottomless pit. The unclean spirit's going to be passed out of the land. The wolf's going to dwell with the lamb. You know, the, the child's going to put his hand in the cockatrice den. The child shall die a hundred years, showing you that the age of of uh, a child's going to be like a hundred year old's going to be considered a child during that time. The ages go back up to like they were pre-flood, where people were living up to be like nine hundred and something years old. So you got the millennium in chapter twenty, Revelation twenty one. You got the new heaven and the new earth, the new and new Jerusalem. Chapter twenty two. You got the river of life and tree of life. So you see the premillennial look the premillennial order of the book of revelation even though it's not in chronological order and it still gave you the premillennial view you got revelation one through three showing you the church age revelation four showing you the rapture revelation uh, six giving you the first account of the tribulation revelation eight through eleven showing you the second account of the tribulation revelation uh, twelve and 13, showing you the fourth account, Revelation 15 through 16, or Revelation uh, 12 through 13, giving you the third account, 15 through 16, the fourth account, 17 through 18, the fifth account, and then you got the millennium, new heavens and a new earth, eternity, a premillennial outlook, church age, rapture, tribulation, millennium, eternity.